Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through an example in Excel that will show you how you can implement the dividend discount model for stock valuation for a situation where you have a stock that has non-constant dividends. In other words, the dividends are not constant at least for a certain period of time, they develop some sort of a constant pattern after a certain time. So here is an example. So suppose there's a company called Premier Incorporated and it is expected that this company will pay out a dividend of $17 in the first year, $13 at the end of the second year, $11 at the end of the third year, and then $6.50 at the end of the fourth. And let's suppose that after these four years, the company decides, you know what, we want to have a constant growth in our dividends of 4% afterwards. So in year five, dividend is going to be 4% more than it was in year four, and it's going to be 4% more in year six, so on and so forth. The question is, if your investors require a rate of return of 12% on the stock, what should be the worth or the price of this stock today? So what I've done here is basically made a timeline. Here you are at time period zero. At the end of year one, you're expecting dividend of $17, then 13, then 11, then 6.5. And at the end of year five, you're gonna get a dividend that is going to be 4% more than what you got at the end of year four. So this is what I'm doing. So 6.5 into 1.04. And this pattern, is going to continue. What I'm going to do here is use the F4 key to sell reference. So technically speaking, if I were to make a timeline beyond this point, it would basically be, I'm just gonna copy this formula with control C and then paste it here. Notice that what it's doing is that it's taking the dividend from last year and then growing it by this constant 4% growth. And this will happen forever. The reason why this is a situation where you have non-constant dividends is because if you notice in the first couple of years, the dividend is not really growing at some constant rate, right? It was just decreasing from 17 to 13, then from 13 to 11, then all of a sudden a big drop. And after that, it starts to grow at a constant rate. When you encounter a problem like this, this is what you need to do. First, you need to think about when the constant growth kicks in and that kicks in at the end of year four so what i recommend you do is that you draw another timeline it's a hypothetical timeline that would start at the end of year four and so that is exactly what i'm doing here this is a hypothetical timeline that i've made it's starting at the end of year four where then technically speaking on this timeline, you're saying that I'm going to get a dividend, which is equal to 6.76. The next year dividend is going to be just 7.03. And this pattern is going to go on forever. If this were your timeline, you can see that the dividends have a constant growth rate starting year one onwards, it's at 4%. So if somebody asks you, what is going to be the price of the stock at this point, which technically is year four, you can say, oh, I can apply the constant growth model or the Gordon growth model, which basically says, take the dividend at the end of year one, divided by your required rate of return, which is 12%, minus the growth rate, which is 4%. So at this point, the price of the stock is gonna be 84.50. The moment you do this calculation, please understand that now on this original timeline, you don't really need to consider the dividends beyond year four because this 6.76, 7.03, and every dividend that you're expecting from the stock beyond this point doesn't matter in the sense that the worth of all those dividends is captured in this 84.50. What does that mean? This means that if you are here at time period zero, you're thinking, okay, at the end of year one, I'm going to get 17, this is fine. And at the end of second year, I'm gonna get 13. And at the end of third year, I'm gonna get 11. But at the end of year four, you're not just getting the $6.50, you are also getting a stock that is going to be worth $84.50 at that point. Right. So basically at time period zero, then your task is to basically say, 
what is the discounted value of this $17, this $13, this $11, and then this $91? That is it. That is it at my required rate of return of 12%. So that's a simple exercise. You're going to do an equal to NPV calculation. The required rate of return is 12%, and you just discount these four numbers. That is it. And so the worth of the stock is $91.20, and that is going to be the price of the stock today. And so this is how you should approach a situation where a stock is expecting to give you non-constant dividends where the constant growth is expected to kick in at a later point in time. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.